Hi, and welcome to another 5-minute tip. In this tip, we're going to look at a technique that I use where we combine the array object with something radial that you're trying to model. And we're going to use the array object in order to make complex edits to every side of the object appear a little bit simpler. Here's how it works. Let's say we have a cylinder, and we're trying to make sort of a throwing star. So I'm going to start with a 12-sided cylinder, sort of a squat one, like a disc. I'm just going to create a nice blue color for it, just so we can see it a bit better. And I'm just going to convert it to an editable object and optimize all the points. And then I'll extrude the sides of it to sort of make a star shape. Now this is where some basic polygonal modeling comes in. And it's really simple stuff. But let's see how this goes. So I'm going to select pairs of faces because I want six spines coming out. So I'm going to skip two select two, go all the way around so I have three of them selected, and then I can do an extrude operation like that. Let's do an extrude of 12 inches, and then I can basically select the interfaces that I didn't select last time. and extrude those the same 12 inches. Now we essentially have a shape that is sort of, uh, you know, representing what we want. We want these faces to be extruded, but we want to make some modifications to all the faces to make it pointy and sort of to make that star shape. So, you know, we could take the lasso selection and we can select the other faces and start doing some scale operations with the normal scale tool. And it's kind of getting us the result we want. But it would be so much simpler if we could simply model one of these spikes and have all of the other spikes reflect our changes. And that's exactly what this tip is going to be about. So the array object in its default use does something like this. You drop an object inside of the array object, at which point it creates a circular repetition of that object at an offset. So the way the repetition works is that zero, well, zero is impossible. One is the smallest number of copies, and it adds to your original object. So one means two, five means six, 10 means 11, so on. So because our shape has six sides, we want five copies. And that's going to give us one copy for each side, so we have six copies total. Then we just take our radius and bring it all the way down, and all the objects overlap on top of each other perfectly. The next step is to simply delete all of the radial parts of the object except one. So we're just going to leave one blade behind and we'll be able to work on that. So I'm just going to go to the top view, go to edge mode. It's the easiest mode I can think of to delete some faces. And I'm going to turn off only select visible. And then I'm just going to come in here and very casually delete all of the faces and well edges in this case that are not associated with this main one at the top. So I just press delete, and what we have, if I turn off the array, is we have one segment of it that's now being replicated around. And this is going to make it really easy to do the additional modeling we want. At this point, creating our star shape is really as simple as just doing some basic modeling techniques on this one part of the object. And all of my transformations are reflected 
in all of the other sides of the object. You can see here in the 3D view, I can do things that would be relatively difficult to do if I didn't have an array, such as uh, use the knife tool in loop mode and slice halfway down one of these prongs. And then, I don't think blue is a very good color. There we go. And then once, you know, once you've created your additional geometry, you can curve the blades if you want and do any sort of modeling operation you want. It gets repeated. Now it is worth mentioning that doing this doesn't make everything easier. For instance, if at a certain point I wanted to create an indentation or a hole through the center of this object, well, I've just made it a lot more difficult to do so. Uh, typically, I could just select all these faces and do an extrude inner and do the same thing on the bottom. But now I need to use alt alternative techniques, such as using the knife tool here. And uh, I can tap shift and then choose a 50% offset and click to make my cut and then repeat that same thing at the bottom, tap shift and do a 50% offset and then click to cut. And I, I can, you can see how it's, it's not really, it's not really going well. There's, there's easier ways to do this. So here's what I do. It's not uncommon when I'm modeling an object like this using this array technique. I'm going to change this to yellow. There we go. It's not uncommon for me to simply select my array and then use the current state to object or the make editable function to just kind of get all of my objects back, merge them into one and then keep modeling. So an easier way to do that is actually to use the connect object and to just place your array in the connect object. We did this in one of my previous five minute tips. And that also allows you to get one smooth surface out of the whole object. You don't have any seams anymore. Without the connect object, you have sharp edges where the segments meet. With the connect object, your fong shading, your, your, your smooth polygon shading transfers quite well between the sides. So if you have a connect object and you say make editable, you get one object out of it. So you have this one connected object. I'm just going to get rid of some of these extra tags that we don't need. We have this one object and we can sort of go back to modeling the regular way where I would select all of these faces and then do an extrude inner right here and then do an extrude operation to bring it in like that. I think I want a smooth shading angle of about 80 degrees. That looks pretty good. And so that's what I was going for. And, uh, you know, I, I, if, if I wanted to continue to do radial sort of symmetric modeling, I could just create another array, put it in there, reduce the radius, reduce the number of copies back down to five and do the same thing where I delete all of the parts of this object that are not connected to the main one. It's probably more efficient ways for me to select this, but I just want to get it done. And we're back to the spot where we have the ability to continue modeling and have it reflected on all of the sides. So this is a tip that, uh, I mean, it's a really simple modeling tip, but I use it a lot when working on my motorcycle models or, you know, when modeling a lamp or something that, that has this radial sort of repetition and symmetry. Because when you want to add some really fine details to one prong of something and you want it to be applied to all of the others, this is really the only way to do it. At least the only way that I think is nice and simple. So if you guys have any uh, input or have a better way of doing this, please let me know in the comments. And until next time, see ya.